Hi, it's Ryan from Ryan Fowler Photography, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up and use your Nissi filter kit. So let's get into it. Our location for this video is the gorgeous Miami Beach on the Gold Coast, Australia. We've got the headland right behind us, or right in front of me here, in behind you on the video, and then rolling right down the beach, we've got uh, plenty of kilometers of straight golden sands leading right up to Surfers Paradise and beyond. It's such a gorgeous location with blue water most of the time, except for today for some reason, and a lot of really good vantage points for both sunrise and sunset. If you're on the Gold Coast, it's definitely a place to check out. So with the Nissi system, and particularly the 100mm system we're talking about here today, there's a variety of adapter rings for different lenses to suit your camera. So for example, this camera is a 72mm filter thread. Now with the V6 Pro holder or potential future kits, as they come out, as well as the V6 full kits, you get a set of adapter rings, or step-up rings you might call them. So in terms of the Pro setup, you get a 82 millimeter ring, which is actually the holder attachment for the filter. And I'll show you how that works in just a second. You also get a 77, 67 and 72 millimeter step up ring or adapter ring inside of that kit. Those are used to attach the filter holder adapter straight onto your lens. Now, if you've got a lens that's got a smaller filter thread than a 67 millimeter thread, you can buy individual threads, particularly for that lens. So these kits go from 49 millimeters right up to 82 millimeters, which covers probably the biggest range of cameras from mirrorless cameras like this and Sony, right through to DSLRs from Canon and Nikon. So in the case of this Fuji X-T3 with a 10 to 24 mil lens, I've got a 72 mil adapter ring. So I'm going to be screwing that straight onto the front there. So it fits in nice and snug. Now you don't need to do this too tight, just finger tight is enough. You don't want to put too much pressure on it to be able to, or to not be able to get it off the lens. So you want to screw this so that it's just past finger tight. You don't want to put too much pressure on, especially if you've got a UV protection filter on your lens, because it makes it a lot harder to get off the lens after you've finished using it. Now from here, I'm going to attach the polarizer. And this is the Enhanced Landscape Polarizer, which fits right into this large 82 mil adapter ring. When you're doing this, put your finger on the little scroll wheel once you place the polarizer in, you can screw it in so that it fits nice and snug. Now, if you didn't have your finger on that little scroll wheel, it would actually keep turning while you're screwing it in and make screwing it in a whole lot harder job. With this ring, it's going to screw onto your adapter ring. So we'll screw that in. Once it takes hold, keep screwing it in until it's just past finger tight. That is probably the perfect strength to have it tightened onto 
because otherwise sometimes it can make the adapter ring fit really nice and tight on here, which makes it very tricky to get off at times, especially if you're around the beach and shooting with sand near you, which can sometimes get into some of the little screw threads. So now that we've got our polarizer and adapters all attached onto the lens, they're nice and firm, so they're not going to come off. We need to attach the filter holder. You can just use the polarizer as it is by itself and use that, especially for waterfalls. And I do have a video on how to do that. So make sure you check that video out from the link in the description. Now to start with, I'm going to be showing you a graduated ND filter. If you haven't used a grad ND filter, and these do come in the kits, for the V6 and future kits as well. Uh, these are dark at the top and then graduate down so that there's a softening area through the middle and then clear at the bottom. They're best used for sunrise, sunset, and there's a variety of filters. So there's a full playlist link in the description down below that you can check out if you wanna find out more specifically about how to use these. Now in terms of putting them into your filter holder, on the filter holder here from Nissi, we've got three individual slots. Now this can take three filters in it at the same time, which is really, really handy. Now using a grad filter, if you're not planning on using any other filters in your filter holder, feel free to just put the filter in on any of the three slots. They're designed to work uh, within any slot. So for me, I'm just gonna pop this into the second slot, slide it in, until it's roughly through the middle of the filter holder. Once that's in there, oh, and just one point, with the writing on the front, that should always be facing outwards or away from you so that it's visible if, so, if you were looking at your camera, for example. That's how these filters are designed to get the best use from them. Now, on the back of your filter holder, there's two little locking pins. On the back of those, that's where they need to fit around the edge rim of the adapter. There's also a pull pin at the bottom of this V6. The top pin is a locking pin, the bottom pin is a pull pin to keep this filter holder attached to your lens. So to attach it, we're going to drop the two solid black pins at the back onto the filter adapter first. Then we're going to pull the locking pin until it clicks in nicely. I always just give it a little wriggle to make sure that it's not going to come off. Once our filter is in the holder and attached onto the lens, for example, if you had a specific angle that you needed this filter to be at and you didn't want to knock it, or you wanted to just keep your filters attached for a little bit of extra security, use the locking knob to screw that right in and give you a much tighter solid grip once you've got your filter holder attached. One little tip to add there is before you put on or take off your filter holder with a locking pin, always make sure that it is unscrewed, simply because you don't want to have that locking pin attached, where if you try and take your filter or attach your filters onto the adapter, they may not actually sit properly and potentially fall off if that locking pin is already screwed in before attaching it. Now our second type of filter that I'm gonna show you and what is commonly coming in kits is a solid ND filter. For this, I'm using the 10 stop filter as an example because that is the one that comes with most kits. And if you're watching this and you've bought a kit, it's very likely that you're going to have one of these filters with you already. Now inside the filter holder with the three slots, these need to be placed inside the first slot. The reason being is on the back of here, you've got this foam gasket. Now that foam gasket is designed to seal this entire unit of light leak from where it attaches onto your lens right through to where the filter sits inside of the filter holder. So for this, it needs to be inside that first slot. So I always like to try and angle it down just slightly, push it in and then slide it right through until it and look through to the back until it creates a perfect seal around the filter holder and the foam gasket. This is going to help you stop any light leak coming through for a long exposure, especially with a 10 stop filter. If you wanted to add a graduated filter, you can always add that into the second or third slot. 
or if you want to add, for example, a six stop filter into this kit as well, you can always slide that on top of this 10 stop filter in the second slot because that's still going to create a sealed light unit. So attaching this is the same process. It's simply the two black pins at the back, pull the locking pin, and that's going to keep it nice and sealed. Give it a wiggle and that will be perfect. If you want a little bit more understanding about what an ND filter actually is, it's a solid piece of dark glass that you can get in different strengths. So for example, you can start off at a three stop ND filter, which is great for waterfalls and seascapes, just slowing down that shutter speed a little bit. And all of these filters that I'm talking about, there are videos individually on those so you can learn more about them. Six stop, 10 stop, they're gonna really start to slow down your shutter speed a lot more which makes for some perfect long exposure conditions. Six stop more for sunrise or sunset, whereas 10 stop you can get long exposures during the day, which can give really fantastic effects. So if you're looking at what ND filters to buy, it's probably best to think about what you actually want to achieve with them. If you just want to slow your shutter speed down a little bit, three to six stops is probably going to be best for you. If you really want to drag out your exposure time and your shutter speed, going to those much higher stops, like 10, 15, or even 20, can give you those effects for blurring clouds and creating really long, dramatic motion shots. I will give you a tip on calculating the exposure time while using a six stop, 10 stop, 15 stop, or even 20 stop filter setup. Now, Nissi have released an app, it's free to download, and say for example, you set your initial shutter speed without a filter on it at one one hundredth of a second. Now, I'm not going to show you that example simply because uh, I can explain it to you. If we can set your shutter speed on one one hundredth of a second and attach a 10 stop filter, inside of the app, you would set your normal shutter speed to one one hundredth of a second, and then you would slide your neutral density amount to 10 stops. And that will spit out what your long exposure shutter speed will be. So in this case, it would be a 10 second shutter speed. So I'd like to say thank you for watching this video and I hope that you found it valuable in putting together your Nissi clip. Now the idea behind this was I created it for the people who have bought filters and filter kits through me as a reseller for Nissi filters. And if you have just bought your kit, congratulations. I really hope that you find a lot of benefit out of it and create some fantastic results. If you're looking for some filters or interested in a filter kit, you're welcome to reach out, contact me, or check the links in the description down below for Australia and the USA to get your Nissi filters direct. If you have found value in this video, please click that subscribe button with the little bell icon so you don't miss another video as they get released hit that like button, leave me a comment down below, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.